Have you ever wondered how much protection the law affords kids doing stupid stuff? Well, you're in the right place because in this video I'm going to be covering the 2003 case of the Crown and G, which still stands as good law as of making this video, where some kids actually burned down a whole supermarket and got off very lightly in the end because of their age. And the legal reasoning behind why they got off lightly might surprise you. But before I start, I do just want to say that if you have any requests or suggestions about what I should cover on the channel, then do let me know in the comments below. I'm always eager to find out what people are interested in, so be sure to leave a comment. Okay, so this is a topic that we all probably have direct personal experience with. Every town, city, suburban neighborhood, remote island, everywhere, regardless of size, has a group of youths that push their luck and cause trouble. It's part of life. Here in the UK, typical stomping grounds for these kids include town centres, outside of big shops, car parks, pretty much all of the places that you actually have to go to. In fact, I remember when my hometown got its first big supermarket, which was a Tesco, uh, they were so worried about kids hanging around out the front, griefing shoppers, that they built a massive park literally next to Tesco's car park to keep kids away. And it worked as well, to be fair. Uh, the park was awesome. It had a five-a-side court, a skate park and everything. It, it was great. But back in 2000, they didn't have that apparently. Instead, two kids who are referred to throughout the case materials as G and R because they had their identities protected due to their age, decided to go out camping on the evening slash morning of the 21st to the 22nd of August in Newport Pagnell without their parents' permission. And I say camping because if I had to guess, this was actually just an excuse to do an all-nighter. When I was at school, I knew of people who would just be out all night and call it camping to their parents. Though I will admit, I didn't know anybody as young as these two who did that because the boys in this case were 11 and 12 years old. In the early hours of the morning of the 22nd of August, GNR went into the back section of a local co-op. There, the boys found bundles of newspapers that they started to read. After that, they lit some of the newspapers on fire using a lighter they had on them and threw the lit paper under a bin or a trash can for those of you watching from across the Atlantic before leaving the area without putting the fire out. As you've probably guessed, the bin caught fire, set fire to other bins, set fire to the shop and also set fire to the buildings next to the shop. In total, this little bit of arson caused a whopping £1 million in damage which would be almost 1.8 million pounds today. The boys were caught and charged with arson, contrary to sections 1.1 and 1.3 of the 1971 Criminal Damage Act, which can, at the extreme end, land you with a life sentence today if you found guilty of this offence. As you can see from section 1.1, in order for the boys to be found guilty, they needed to have either intended to destroy or damage property belonging to another, or they needed to have been reckless as to whether or not this would happen. And this idea of a recklessness was the crux of this case. You see, recklessness in English law has at its heart the notion of taking risks. People can be held criminally responsible for the taking of certain risks. If I stand at the top of a tall building in the middle of London and throw a basketball off the roof onto the busy street, I'm taking a pretty huge risk that could have some awful consequences. I could kill someone, or at least cause someone nasty damage. I could smash up a car, I could damage windows, I could frighten people, nothing could happen at all, and the ball might just bounce around. You get the idea. Well, taking that risk could get me into trouble with the law. However, there is another dimension to recklessness that was really important in this case, and it was argued about all the way to England's highest court, the then obnoxiously titled House of Lords, and this is whether or not the person being accused of a crime had to be aware of the fact that they were taking a risk whether or not they actually saw the risk that they took. In other words, when the kids in this case told people, presumably their parents and the police, that they had no idea the store could burn down because they set fire to some newspapers, did that even matter? The prosecution tried to say no, that when we're working out what counts as recklessness, we actually need to think about what normal people would predict. Basically, if you or I chucked some smouldering paper under a bin and didn't put it out, we would probably see that there's a risk of it spreading, right? Well, the defence said no. They argued that because these kids genuinely didn't see the risk of burning down the store, then it's not right to say they've been reckless, which means that they wouldn't be guilty of an offence under Section 1 because that requires recklessness. 
And the defense won. The kids were actually convicted by the law courts who were using the normal person test of recklessness that the prosecution was arguing for. But their convictions were quashed on appeal at the House of Lords, which basically means that they were acquitted of the crime. All because they were kids and didn't have enough foresight of what might happen. In fact, the jury felt so bad at trial about applying the normal person standard that they even challenged the judge on why they had to use it. This is the judge's reply on screen, which you can pause and read if you want, but it basically just says because it's the law. Although this case, the Crown and G, actually changed the law on this point, which is why it's significant. I would also add that the kids weren't going to be punished too severely in any event, as the judge at trial sentenced them both to one-year supervision orders, which basically means that the local authority monitors and checks in with them while they're probably living at home. Now, you'll have to park your scepticism about whether or not you believe that these kids didn't see the fire coming, or whether or not you think that they probably outright intended what they did and just lied about it. As for me, I don't know. Kids around 11 and 12 can be really far apart in their ability to think things through. In fact, let me know in the comments if you have any insights into this and whether or not you think the kids you know around that age would foresee fire spreading like this. You know, would they have been reckless in this situation? And if you liked hearing about this case, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to catch other similar cases. Also, standard disclaimer, but this is not legal advice. This is just an explanation of what happened to these kids back in the early noughties. So don't go burning any buildings down.